Welcome to Cut Daisies and Unicorns, and this is a Phil and Steve edition. So we are in the studio. We're talking. It's a. Uh, it's it's one of those days that I think the sun's gonna try to break through in Chicago. It's been apparently. I've only been here for a couple of days now in, back in Chicago, but I think the sun looks like it's gonna poke out of the of the clouds which then would leave Steve feeling mixed. <laughs> well, I'm not torn on this whole thing. I mean, you know, I, I can be happy for people. There's just something about 83 and sticky um, that doesn't doesn't seem, you know, so great. Right. But, you know, here we are, and we are in Chicago, so these things are true. Mm-hmm. You know, we got, we got to talk about laying down some truth here. Okay. Yeah. We got some truth. Well, I mean, our perceived reality is is that it's, you know, the sun is trying to break through right. and it's warm. Yeah. And we're like battling our techno our, our technology. People always are like, "Why do you tell us your technology stories?" So like, <laughs> because we we don't want this to be the Facebook or Instagram right. of podcasts. We want to tell the truth. Right. Yeah, and so the truth is good. The reality is, is that if we record the podcast and we run the air conditioner, you're going to get to hear the air conditioner the whole time. Right. Should we get some of those Mister fans that you know squirt water and like have the fan blowing on you? Yeah, for lay it? something like right over the top here, and it just comes down. Yeah. I wonder if that would work well with the electrical equipment, though. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Not at all. I wonder, but you know how some ceiling fans, you can hear the hum? And with the way our microphones are set up, I'm sure we would pick it up. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a, there is a difference. I mean, so I was just in Arizona. Oh, yeah. And and so when I, I like, it's so weird because, like, sometimes you don't know the difference between it. But I, I take a shower out there. And I dry off. Yeah. And, and you know the funny thing is, is like I stay dry. <laughs> like here, I oh, get wow. out of the shower. Yeah. I'm still wet. And even though I'm dried off, like I <laughs> it just seems like I'm always just like sopping. Yeah. Moist. And, and I like <laughs> <laughs> moist. <laughs> For those of you who love that word out there, moist. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Heavy on the T. Right. Yeah, yeah, but it's it it does take a little bit uh, getting used to because you know then if you're like for me like putting gel whatever it is in, in my hair like sometimes it's what you know like your it, male hair product right yeah it gets it it gets different so you're like all right I gotta I gotta balance this out because I'm not used to putting it in dry hair it's always wet <laughs> see now you just walked into the girls arena. They're like you don't even know anything about what it what what problems happen, you know, on trying trying to be able to balance it. Yeah, yeah. And oh, they're yeah. like you're dealing with your hair and some right. gel. Uh huh. Yeah, and they got this stuff that they put on their face. And... Right. And they often have longer hair than I do. <laughs> yeah, at least on the top of their head. Right. <laughs> and there is electrolysis for those whose beards are uh-huh. as long as ours. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, man. What's happening in the world right now? I was thinking, you know what? We could timestamp this with a little mark in history of, uh, in our reality. I mean, it looks like that there's continued conflict in the Middle East. Continuing. Yeah. yeah the, and it seems um, with the, the nature of our, our country, like if, you're, if you don't back Israel, you're automatically a uh, uh an unpatriotic person right which, you know I'm, I'm looking at it like i mean this is this is political this has no i mean and some people try to make this a religious thing like we have to back as you know if, if you're if you're you know a christian if you're that like you've got to back this and if you don't back, you know like oh like no this is political and this has been a political situation for decades oh if keep, not longer. Keep going. <laughs> right. Keep going. Right. Keep right. going. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds 
of years. Right. I mean, I guess you can even go all the way back to Old Testament, right? So, well, there there is that, but for people who don't read the Bible or don't believe that it's true, mm-hmm. you know, as a historical document, um, you know, then you'd still have to go back and see the conflict. History does unfold and show us that. Actually, the book that I'm reading, yeah, for people who are wondering, uh, I I followed through on my statement that I was going to buy a couple historic books on the Knights nice. Templar. Yeah. And I have found that this is going to become the basis of a new adjective that I'm going to put behind my name. So it's going to be Steve Koval, artist, philosopher, poet, historian. Mm. I, I just figured, you know what, this is a great time in my life. Yeah. For as far as I go forward, why not learn more about going backward? (laughs) And so, isn't that funny, too, that what we're really looking at, now, this is like cancel culture, too, so right. we, we can talk about how, how history wasn't taught, mm-hmm. <laughs> what history wasn't taught. Right. And there's um, plenty that wasn't. <laughs> there's a new documentary on Burning Tulsa coming out. I did. I just, they have a podcast of it, too. Oh, do they really? Yeah. Yeah. I just noticed that this morning, that one of the ones I listened to was about um, they were looking at 9-11. They had a whole, like, when the, the latest, uh, it was last year, was a 20 years? No, 2019 was 20 years, right? No, I don't even, you know. I No, 2021 was. Yeah, 2021, because. That'll be 20 years. 1991, right? No. Uh, 2001, right? 2001, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So they had a whole pocket, and so it was. I, I listened to that little. I mean, it was like six episodes or six or eight episodes, and then they were done. It's just a mini yeah. series, but they just started promoting the Burning Tulsa, and I didn't know what it was about. So, yeah, yeah. Well, and if you want a graphic novel, mm-hmm. movie, uh, media thing, yeah, uh, Marvel, uh, The Watchmen, oh, uh, is based on. And that's the one that's on HBO now, right? Yeah. Yep. That's also based on the movie that was out like 10 years ago. I don't know about that. I didn't know that there was a movie that's mm-hmm. 10 years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, I'm going to fact check myself just in case. All right. So we do ramble and we scramble. And so the Knights Templar takes us back to. Uh, 1099. Mm-hmm. Now, help me out. We're, we're, we're really good today at proving how ignorant we are. <laughs> so if it is 1100 AD, yeah. what century is that? Uh, that would be... Isn't that the 12th? 12th, yeah, I think it should be the, t- the 12th century because it always goes up. It's Yeah, so like right now right. in 2021. We're in the 21st century. I thought we've been in the 21st century my whole life. Tw- I don't know. I think it was the 20th century. Yeah, I don't know. I, I get confused. By oh, it, 20th but, century Fox. That happened right. in the 1900s or whatever? Yeah. All right, so then we're, we're in the 21st century. All right. I think this again is one of those things that if we had like <laughs> taken time to research all this stuff, we could we could talk informatively about this. Right. Um, but yeah, or just have somebody around who knows more than us. Sure. That's that's my go to. Well, until you um, become the 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 historian, then maybe we'll have somebody on who's an historian and then yeah. they can help correct that. And then you'll learn and that'll help give you your title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, 1099, mm-hmm. that's about when the inception. And just to let people know, I, I'm offsetting the unbalance in my life with I actually researched legitimate historians that are scholarly. Right. To, to be able to read up on this. So, not just the conspiracy theories. Because so, that's a whole other ballpark. So not just the conspiracy theories. And it's really super interesting. Because what I really believe is happening uh, 
at Oak Island, mm -hmm. I think there are historians that are having presuppositions based on the knowledge that we currently have, but not the knowledge that we don't have. Mm. And so that's great as far as archaeologists being able to dig in the dirt and find out more stuff. And I mean, one of the things that came out this season was that um, they were writing history because of the evidence that they found mm -hmm. of people being in Nova Scotia back in the 1400s. Up until that point, they didn't think that there was anyone from across the sea, the big ocean, um, you know, prior, or they, they didn't think anyone was there prior to the 1600s. In Nova Scotia. Well, there were people in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. There were people in North America, but they didn't think, I, I don't know, it was like, you know, right. like any... Well, they call it the known world, the unknown world, right? Because there were some... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and I'm not, I'm not going to diatribe on that today. I'm just saying that I am I am reading, but going back to the political, um, it was in the First Crusade, which is right in that time era. Mm-hmm where uh, Christianity of the time, or the Church of the State at the time, which we probably could parse those words too, because when, when government got involved with approving or not approving faith-basedness, mm -hmm. that, that had a major influence in what was going on. But um, yeah, the Knights, the Knights Templar, I mean, basically, why they were called that is because they set up shop at Solomon's Temple, uh, which is, I'll get my direction. See, this is the part of being a historian. I'd be able to say, yeah, just southeast of, you know, the uh, the rock, you know, that's... So anyway, lear learning a lot, learning a lot about that. I, I think it's fascinating that from Solomon's Temple, it's not really based on that, and I still have to do my research on Moses being a pharaoh. Hmm. And I think you're, um, some of the, the history on that then is, is also interesting. You go back, you know, even for like any time you're dealing with, with mid East, right? Middle East, you're, you're looking at, at, at conflicts that have definitely extended into, you know, that time period. But even before you talked about, you know, state church stuff, like, you got to go back to Constantine, right? I mean, he was the one that first was like, "Hey, we're going to make this the, you know, empire's religion." Yeah. Yep. And uh and then that's who went back to Israel, went back to to um Jerusalem, and he just started, you know, buying up or, you know, marking all the properties and making sure that everything was marked on the based on the life of Jesus. Actually, I think he yep. sent his mom back there to do that. Really? Yeah. So, so that's an interesting part about it because there was a lot that, I mean, if you're looking at it, that, would have been three hundreds, right? Would have been Constantine three, three twenty five was uh, Council of Nicaea. Okay. So, or yeah, I, I'm. I, I think my my dating's right on that. But. Okay. So you're looking at that was a, a major shift that was happening. Yeah politically but also then politics started to tie in with the church yeah because he saw that there was this wave like oh you know if, if you're going to be politically strong you got to follow the wave you got to say okay this is the where it's coming from and if we're not going to be on board with it then we're going to get run over by it yeah yep which you know takes us to our current politics you know as we talk about so why are we so tied in with with israel because it's and this this was religious um carter right born again christian right and also dispensationalist yeah gets tied in with israel and believes that if we're backing israel if we're going to build this temple then jesus is going to return huh and it's like so you get this strong tie starting with with jimmy carter then with the state of Israel actually being a state in, what was that, 63? Man, dude, I, I don't know. 
it's his history right <laughs> right i believe i think it's 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 in that range 63 um or 67 yeah but so as that political and religious tie-in comes to to israel then we've from that moment been huge backers of israel and jimmy carter's southern baptist right yeah yeah and so when you brought up dispensationalism that that's what made, brought me back to it and so jimmy carter um dispensationalism baptist i grew up baptist mm -hmm. and um i i would tell you in my formative years i believe that when we were good to israel that the united states would be blessed because of it because the jewish nation is god's chosen people now i stumble over the part about um being a gentile and uh then you know later on in my thought process realized well i mean paul addresses that uh, when he's like hey you know the gentiles are loved by god so very interesting we're just giving people kind of an overview right. i mean these are when if you ask yourself the question what do these guys think about in their spare time these are things that like i'm all over now usually it's um it, it's got a good dose of interaction back and forth between some other science fiction thing that i'm taking in and some other conspiracy right. motion uh media yeah. that's coming into my life and how all that works together right but um could you I would just say 15, 20 years ago, would you ever believe that you would allow something in your life that would allow third party people to be able to track your conversations? No. Me either. Right. And yet, uh, I, how many things I can count right now that are actually tracking me? <laughs> right. Yeah, because you wear the watch and you have Alexa watch, and I have a phone. I have yeah, yeah, Alexa. I mean, yeah, and then your cars. <laughs> well, I went and got uh, TSA pre-check yesterday, mm -hmm. and um, when I walked in there, do you do you know that your passport has a chip in it? No. Oh yeah, like how long have they been doing that? It's not. It's not in the front line news, but I watched the lady take my passport, and after she took a picture of it, yeah, she held it up to this device that was taking the information, and she was compiling the file. She held my passport to the top of it, mm -hmm. and I watched the computer say, reading passport. So there's a magnetized chip in our passports that as we're going from gates to gates and different things like that, they're tracking hmm. the motion and the activity and everything like that that's going on with the passports. Wow. I did not realize that. I know I, that's why I wondered. I know that they're, um, they're shifting over to what they call a real ID. And you have to have a real ID by 2023 now. They they were pushing it for like 2021. It was supposed to happen this right, year. Right, by October. Now they're pushing it back a little bit. But this whole real ID, I'm assuming, has the same issue. I mean, they're, they're probably also going to have something in the real ID that makes it easier to track. Well, I'm pretty sure it has to do with a database. Could be, you know, that once, you know, you've got your real ID and blah, 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 blah. And they're saying, I mean, basically it's another gate of how to limit people to going places where they don't belong mm -hmm. or, you know, keeping people from doing any, something that they would want to do. Right. You know, I, you and I've tossed around the question in regards to the vaccine, you know, is the vaccine going to be the thing that where if you don't have your yeah. vaccine card, now, going back to dispensationalism and being a Baptist, mm -hmm. so one of the major, major areas of study um, that I think a lot of Baptist people hang their hat on mm -hmm. is the study of the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel mm -hmm. in, in regards to uh, apocalyptic type situations. Back in the 70s, there was a breakout of a bunch of movies uh, in regards to um, the Antichrist, um, I have heard from different, I, I, I'm going to say 
yeah, right wing fundamentalists, pretty much any president that they don't agree with is the Antichrist. <laughs> right. And and so Isn't um, that funny how that works? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John's like funny or just that's the way it works. <laughs> well, I would say, hey everyone in uh podcast land, welcome to reality. <laughs> Tribalism, mm -hmm. dualism, the human mind, right. undeveloped, unevolved, and uh yeah. So uh, but with that, you know, so so then there's a study in this very poetic and image driven book and people surmising now i mean the scholars would say steve you're full of shit because we actually can study this and draw these lines together and know about all this stuff and i'm like hey i'm not saying i know more than you i'm just saying as a part of my growing up this was a major emphasis mm -hmm. you know and and so um and it's it's interesting how different people believe different things. Mm. Yeah, well, I I noticed that, um, and this is for people who are you know kind of in that um, arena of the uh, you know Christians or whatever. But there was a guy that was um, a part of uh, um, Toby Max band, the Jesus Freak people. Yeah, what is that? Um, DC Talk. DC Talk, yeah. right? And he came out over the weekend and said that he's an ex-evangelical. So that's kind of the 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 term. And, and he's been talking about deconstructing his faith. Now, people automatically, when he jumped out and said, hey, I'm an ex-evangelical, it automatically, like, they were lumping him in with, like, he's an apostate. Like, he, he's cursed now. Right. And he's like, I still believe. He's like, I just don't believe everything that you tell me. <laughs> right. And, like, why is that so bad? Like, you know, we talk about a deconstructing, you know, of, of faith. But I think it's more of we're also constructing the things that we know to be real. You know, so I mean, I he threw in a term, uh, the universal Christ, and I was like, I wonder <laughs> if if he's a follower of Richard Rohr. <laughs> well, it it wouldn't be a surprise to me <clears throat> with the denouncing of evangelicalism. Mm -hmm. And hey, since we're getting all prophetic. Right. You know, I mean, and, and for those, again, we, we usually don't plan on what we're going to do, but we'll, we'll run down this road of uh, religious terminologies and different things uh, for any person who's like, you know, I'm listening, but I really don't know what you guys believe, and I really don't know what in the world is up with all this. You allude to things, and then you, you know, like you, you, you get close, and then you walk away, and uh, stuff like this in conversation. So we'll, we'll just go down the line. Uh, evangelicalism uh, was a split from Protestantism, which was the Protestants, I, I, I believe, I could have my history wrong here, but I believe the first Protestant was Luther when he broke away from the church right. with the Reformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, and they called them evangelicals except in the german language but oh really right. mm -hmm. okay so they were actually at first evangelical even though they were considered protestant yeah inside the catholics yeah yeah and and so so then you get with uh people crossing the ocean the united states being formed um and, and then you have a lot of different people I mean, and, and you can go back to uh, Lutheranism, then you can talk about the Anabaptists, mm -hmm. and then you can talk about the Swedish Lutheran, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and that. And actually, when you get to the U.S., then you've got Puritans, um, it, you know, and all these different uh, groups of people who aren't Roman Catholic. Now, so then we have to understand that before there was the Roman Catholic Church, then it was really the Jewish nation. And, but, but Jews, 
this, this is what I told Amy. The difference is people who live in Israel are Israeli. That doesn't make them Jewish. Right. Jewish is a faith practice. Right. But a lot of times it gets synonymous with a people group. Right. <laughs> and so you can be Israeli and not be Jewish. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then in, you get into the Palestine area and you can be Muslim and from Palestine, Muslim and from Israel, Muslim and from, well, now, I mean, England and the United States. And, mm-hmm. you know, and so, um, you know, so the, the double check on this is, hey, can, can you be an American and be Muslim? Mm. Yeah, you can. There's, there's a difference between faith identifications mm-hmm. and nationality. Right. Now, we're really going to, we're, we're, we're rabbit trailing all over the place. Right. Are you ready for this? So this last weekend, my, my daughter got married. It was a great time. We talked about it on the last podcast in the future and doing some time travel with our conversation and stuff like that. But my mom came out to be able to visit. Marilyn. Marilyn is Phil's favorite Coble. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, I, I just walk into rooms and say apples and trees, right? And people shake their head and they're like, no, no, you're not Mother Teresa. But she may be. And, uh, and so anyway, I got to, got to hang out with, with Marilyn. So I'm reading the Knights Templar stuff. Mm-hmm. And in conversation, my mom tells me, my grandpa Kretschmer mm-hmm. was a Freemason. Mm. Getting mixed in, huh? <laughs> so he and my uncle Lloyd were in the Masons, mm. and they were in high enough order, you know, because there's 33 degrees. Yep. But they traveled to the annual meeting where the 33 degrees, I mean, like they were up there. Mm-hmm. And the Masonic Temple was a big part of his adult life right both he and my uncle lloyd and i'm telling you what these guys hey not perfect i don't want to you know glorify them or whatever i mean everybody's human and so um you know but they were successful businessmen they were successful farmers they i mean like and they there there's a lot of this that's all tied into it's who you know Mm -hmm. so then we're talking about my dad my dad died don passed away at the age of 54 when my son was one. So he's been gone 25 years. Mm-hmm. And um, people are, you know, like, well, what's Don's story? Well, he, he was an only child, but his dad came from Canada, Sask- Saskatchewan area, hmm. and migrated to Detroit. Now, I remember when there was this big fuss about immigration, whether it was illegal, who's an alien, who's a human. Now, just to be fully transparent here, Phil, I mean, like all the the transparencies, we're, we're just letting people know when we use this term. When we're talking about aliens, it's not someone who's here from Mexico without passports or papers. Right. We're talking about little green men, mm-hmm. to quote the queen, in the crown. Yep. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about extraterrestrials. When we say alien, and when, we, when they finally make themselves known, like, and I get to have a conversation, mm-hmm. then I'll, I'll find out the politically correct thing to be able to call them. <laughs> and then I can spend at least two or three episodes saying I'm sorry for using a derogatory term, mm-hmm. um, in in regards to, you know, what, what do you call an alien? Well, an extraterrestrial, okay. Or like if they're out from a galaxy, then is that their nationality? And so right. like it, they're, they call themselves after whatever galaxy they're in? All like right. Like Mork from Ork? Exactly. <laughs> nanu Nanu. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so, so, uh, you know, talking about that when when this whole thing about immigration came up i i was around a table with people who were sharing their feelings about it and i'm like hey wait 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 i don't know my grandpa's story but i'm telling you i'm only i'm i'm only the second generation 
from somebody who came from Canada to work in the auto field or um, auto industry. Mm -hmm. And his story is very similar to other people's stories who immigrated to the U.S. Right. So which part about melting pot did you miss the melt? Right. <laughs> and and so anyway, and I and I just said to mom, I'm like, how come I never heard any stories about? Because she thought I figured my grandpa's dad came from Germany, and I have to get the timelines marked down of what's going on. Mm-hmm. But she's like, yeah, your your grandpa left at the age of fifteen and went to the U.S. He just left home because he and his father didn't get along. Hmm. I'm like, whoa. I said, so do we know anything about great-grandpa Koble or great-great-grandpa Koble? And she's like, no. And she said, your, your grandpa Steve wouldn't talk about it. And I'm like, so how far removed are we from the Nazi Reich hmm. if people aren't talking about it? Right. Because usually there's a reason why you don't talk about it, Right. Right. So I have another research project, and that is I want to research uh, German immigration to Canada during the time frame of Nazi Germany. Like post-World War II or during World War II? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like people that wanted to get out because they weren't a part of what was going on, Mm -hmm. and then post about people who are going um, or who got out and fled. Mm Mm-hmm. So I, I made this casual joke. I'm like, oh, so we're the Eskimo Nazis instead of the South American Nazis. <laughs> could, could be. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, like, ha, I don't know. I mean, like, wearing parkas? Uh-huh. I mean, in the evolution, I'm like the hairiest of humanity. I mean, so <laughs> like, I'm figuring there's a reason why we migrated from Germany to Canada, then into Michigan um, and, you know, in our and now here. hairy body men, <laughs> right. dancing circles full of joy. Yeah. Which is, we both have that trait. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, all, all of that for, we we're talking about religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So evangelicals, historically i are not inclusive Mm -mm. i would say they're more exclusive than anything well i know in baptists um there's the whole idea of personal separation and then there's ecclesia ecclesiastical separation Mm -hmm. so there's a separation which starts first the church and state Mm -hmm. strongly believe that the church and state should not be bound the the state or nation shouldn't impose on the church any of it so it was definitely a pendulum swing move mm-hmm. from the church of england from the state churches in europe and how that you know all went down right. evangelicals with the break away from the pope and and catholicism you know were like no we're not going to have one person priesthood of the believer you know each individual can come to god themselves they don't need a mediator jesus christ and I should say Jesus the Christ actually, you know, then said, hey, I am the mediator between God and man. And so there was flesh put to uh, what the priest did in the temple in the Old Testament. So that's going on. And evangelicals then moved into this thing where, so you've got church and state separation, Mm -hmm. then you have personal separation which is you know i don't dance i don't chew i don't go with girls who do yeah and so although a conversation with a girl that dances and chews i'm sure would be interesting Mm -hmm. haven't run into too many too many ladies that chew Mm -mm. but we don't live in the south so i mean where tobacco is you know between snuff and chew it's just another option easily accessible oh yeah (laughs) so then personal separation then moves into the the church separation and and that's where like well the baptist would be like we don't do things with the methodists Mm -hmm. and the baptist is like we don't do things with the assembly of god the Mm -hmm. the the pentecostals you know right and um and, and so anyway my one of my favorite quotes from the river runs through it is you know what a Presbyterian is? Hmm. A Baptist who can read. 
And then all of a sudden you have Muhammad and he's giving his teachings and then you get to the United States and then you have the whole Mormon story that unfolds mm -hmm. with a new revelation. And the whole Mormon trail of tears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then people ask the question, why is humanity confused? Yeah, and because it also takes me to even, to, you know, you talk about separation, yeah. and there there's lots of different um, religions that are there. I mean, so, like, you look at um, the Amish, and they have a word like shun, you know, mm -hmm. that if somebody is has been a part of the community that goes against the community, then they're shunned. They're yeah. separated. Yeah. I look back and um, watched a series a while back about um, uh, Scientology. Oh yeah, and they have a whole you know segment of of separating. So you you try to make the family part of Scientology. If the family doesn't come along, then you separate from them. And they still apparently deny that, but I mean it's a part of their their church. There's there's this separation. So. Why do we have separation when it comes to this? You know, and, and as you, you found also in Christianity, there's a whole separation part. Yeah. Like be separated from those people or, you know, like you get to pick who they are. Yeah. And it's one of those things. So interesting. I'm going to keep on, I'll, I'll keep on tapping on this rock. Mm. So one, one of the things in the covenant of most Baptist churches. Yeah is you can't be a part of a secret order. Oh, right. That was also found in Lutheranism, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so I mean, how, really, you know, that, that was a point of separation. Now, as a child growing up, mm -hmm. what I know is that Don, formerly mentioned dad who passed, right? he, he, was, he was a deacon in the Baptist church. Yeah. And I read the covenant... It, it, it was in the front of the hymnal. You could read the covenant every time. As, as, as a member of this church, this is what we believe. And, there's, yeah. and, and a covenant was, these are the guidelines to life that we're going to live by. And one of the things on that list was no playing cards. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I won't frequent places of ill repute, mm -hmm. won't, won't go to bars, won't go to the theater. I mean, these things spelled out. Won't won't use playing cards, hmm. and yet in our home, my dad grew up playing cards. He loved euchre, pinochle. He could play them all. For him to learn a game was no big deal. Um, one of my favorite childhood memories is coming back my freshman year of high school, and uh, we were sitting down and we were we were playing rook, which is the color coded version of euchre, basically. And uh, my dad was like, Steve, would you just play that? And he called the card that was the next logical card for me to play. And I'm like, how did you know that? He goes, oh, I know what all you guys got. So we laid down our cards. And he told me right to left the cards that I held in my hand. Wow. <laughs> but if, if you watch card players play, uh -huh. card players will sort Oh, systematically yeah. so once he and then he would watch where i'd pull from if i was throwing a red or a green or a blue mm -hmm. right. so then you can start reading hands and you can also if you're paying attention to the other card player you can be able to see where they're pulling from and know how many they have left of whatever and so i mean anybody who played cards with my dad was at a disadvantage mm -hmm. um but played cards a lot and we had you know, uh, church families over and they play pinochle or they play euchre together and stuff like that. And so ding, 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 child, here's, you know, how to parent effectively. Just know that your child's going to pick up more of what you're not knowingly teaching right. <laughs> than what you are teaching. It's true. Yeah. And so anyway, you know, so there's this covenant. I'm like, well, everybody's getting VCRs. Why the hell can't I go to a theater? Right. It's the same damn content, mm -hmm. you know? I remember the first time I saw a family, they worked with the youth, and we walked in and they had cable, and they had HBO. Ooh. I'm like, going to straight to hell for paying that monthly fee. 
And uh, and so anyway, as you know, a child, all this stuff. I mean, like, I is this real? Is this? And the answer is yes. Hmm. But you know, it, is it so far fetched that if in the Puritan movement, literally the congregation was segregated? Right. This is for people who don't know the history of the church and stuff like that. You know, and so women sat on one side, men sat on the other side. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, to the point of that the head covering taught in First Corinthians was actually uh, instituted. Mm-hmm. Man, you wouldn't you wouldn't find a woman wearing slacks, right. you know, dresses only. Mm-hmm. Then you get into the Bob Jones era, um, probably late 60s through, I don't know, 2010 or something like that, you know? And they always tease that there were pink and blue sidewalks because that's how segregated. Yeah. And Bob Jones, man, those boys, they were preacher boys, so you got to keep them pure, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's funny because I... um I look at the early 1900s, which is, which is kind of there. Uh, there was not a lot of churches that were not Puritan. Oh. I mean, so I even go back to you. I mean, some of the same things in in Lutheranism. I mean, it was like don't drink, don't smoke, don't go to movies, don't go to dances, don't go to. There's all the don't, 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 mm-hmm. and uh, there was even a um, you know. So don't gamble was one of them. But yeah. They also looked at life insurance as a gamble. Really? Like you were gambling. So you also couldn't have life insurance early wow. on because you were gambling that your life was going to end ultimately. Yeah. And you were going to get paid if you died. <laughs> right. So that was, you know, so all of that, that stuff then became, but we're going to pick and choose what we like. And we're going to pick and choose what we're going to hammer on. And we're going to pick and choose who we're going to crush and who we're not going to crush. Yeah. Right. I mean, and that's, that's the, the blending of all of that crap that was just like, all right, so what are we going to do now with this? So talk to me about power and control. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about a threat of humanity that is consistent and it's about power and it's about control. Oh yeah. Who was the head of the CIA when uh, Kennedy got shot? Bush, wasn't he? Bush Mm Sr. Yeah, who became president. Right. Who was also a member of the Bohemian Society. Oh, I didn't know he was part of Bohemians. Yeah. So I'm I'm watching, and uh, actually I bumped around. I got to, I I saw secret societies, and I thought it was going to go into... Freemasonry. Now I'm coming off the weekend of discovering my grandfather was, you know, Freemason, multiple degrees. Mm-hmm. Nobody even knows. That's that's how. I mean, just like, and I don't know how to find that history. It's not like the Mormon Tabernacle where you can go and do genealogies all day long on the Freemasons. I mean, like right. this is they not. Call I mean, it secret for a reason. I yeah, guess. yeah. I'm <laughs> like, break this secret, you know. But um. Yeah, so I'm watching Decoded, and they bring out this Bohemian society uh, that roots back to skull and skull and bones, and 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 they're just saying Jimmy Buffett is a member of the Bohemian society. Hmm. I mean, one of their claims to fame is the that. Mannheim Project that mm-hmm. ended up leading to the development of the atomic bomb. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, in context. In time frame, think about it. Wasn't Einstein involved in that whole project? I believe so. Yeah. Guess who else was alive at the time? Tesla. Oh. They were contemporaries. Because Einstein said that there's no smarter human in the world than Nikola. Tesla. Nikola, yeah. Yeah, and so so then you have this. But one of their claims to fame is, is that they're like, the Mannheim Project mm-hmm. was... Um, was, you know, think tanked. The catalyst of that conversation took place with this Bohemian group where there is a 40-foot tall owl. Oh, go with me here for a minute. Right. Are you ready for it? Okay. 40-foot towel, tall um, owl. And the opening ceremony 
is they have a casket with a form of a child's body and they are casting all they call it the cares ceremony they cast all their cares and with great pyrotechnics they burn they're making an offering to the owl currently the voice of the owl is walter cronkite <laughs> who reads through this script really yeah huh and so like um and there's 2000 and i don't know so many members and um the the buy-in to be able to be a part of this thing is uh twenty five thousand dollars per year or just one i that was the entry fee i who knows it's a secret society i mean true. you know um but and 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 so so there's this bohemian group and then i got to watch the one on the missing um uh, cornerstone of the Capitol and the White House, and there was a lot of conversation with Freemasons and, and and stuff like that. But this is this is the the show is called Decoded, mm -hmm. and this guy is writing fictional uh, storylines of stuff that he has you know researched and taken a look at and and stuff like that. And so anyway. Um, I bring this all up because the rooted basis for the Bohemian group is the Celtic is rooted in the Celtic monks known as Druids mm -hmm. that would use groves as sacred place who have been known to make child and human sacrifices. Hmm. And this gets into the Celtic monks are contemporaries with the desert fathers and mothers and actually very formational in the um, monastery lifestyle or monistic followings and things like that. So I'm spitting that out of regurgitation from the episode that I just watched. Right. Yeah. So when when you say, Steve, why would you study the Knights Templar? I really believe that what we're finding there there were or and there have been the springing forth of all kinds of secret societies. And I'm just I'm just coming back to there as the starting point. I don't know what happened earlier. I just know that a king said, hey, um, there's a great conflict between Muslims and Christians who are making their journey to Jerusalem. And so as they're doing that, we need you to protect them. We will pay you so much. Um, one, one of the kings uh, paid the salaries, the annual salaries for 200 soldiers for one year as a... Um, payoff for his sin of having killed somebody. Penance. Penance. <laughs> yeah. So then, how confusing does it get when evangelicals preach that the uh, forgiveness of sin is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, um, and the Catholic Church is like, well, no, if you pay us money, we can forgive you, we can absolve you of your sin. Mm -hmm. And then we look at then finance becomes involved with the church and church and money and all of this comes together again government wants to get uh involved in religion because there is a financial strand uh, that's in, involved with that as well and then you turn around and in the u.s currently churches are non-profits and so are non-taxable mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, I was just looking back. So Decoded is on History Channel. Is it? Is it? I'm trying to figure out if that's the that's the one. Yeah, the right one. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. So those of you out there, just so you know, it can be found on the History Channel, and there is. I mean, there's a whole bunch of uh, different episodes here. I think I I only saw two seasons. Right. But um, yeah, they cover they cover. But it's like a varied topic, so you get the 
secret presidential codes, White House is, I mean, I'm assuming that's the one that you saw. Mm -hmm. You get Statue of Liberty, which um, Statue of Liberty is loaded with secret symbols put there by a secret society bent on world domination. There's a lot of talk about New World Order, Mm. and that was uh, in the uh, apocalyptic... um, you know, Revelation, Daniel, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of people living reactionary. Reactionary. Mm-hmm. Uh, when what's really funny is there's people who are like, oh my gosh, I'm afraid there's going to be a new world order. And I'm like, you know what? You're only 30 years old. You're only 60 years old. The new world order is already here. It's established and in place. Mm-hmm. Now, people be like, you're a, that, that's crazy talk. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, come on, take take a short jump off of a, uh, you know, a, a little cliff, and know that there have been people at work for hundreds and hundreds of years in a gathering together. Um, I was watching this uh, military movie the other day, and they were like, it was uh, somebody was in conflict trying to create conflict with Russia. Yeah, and they're like. Hey, ever since the Cold War has been over, now our country is turned against itself. We need to be at war with someone to unify the country so that we can be able to be banded together. Or what they're saying is we need a lemming mindset to be able to go in the direction. You know, and and with that, so that if we're unified, what what what's being played on? What's being played on? Is the what? What term does Roar use for when people are transformed, um, uh, enlightened, mm-hmm. um, transformation? He uses that word synonymously with salvation, um, or um, y- you know, and, and people are like, ah, that's too new age for me. I don't know if I can do that all in the same time, you know. But but um, Roar's point is that humanity suffers greatly because of the dualistic mind Mm -hmm. and we've talked about the difference between the dualism of someone's right someone's wrong you know um and and, you know this is my tribe building building your own tribes your own your own thing with that and so um you know basically they're playing on the whole part of that if we can have someone else to be the enemy, we don't have to um, be gutting ourselves out as a country because we can band together to be able to um, to point the direction of anti something against a different a, a different nation and stuff. Hmm. You know, and so this whole thing about you know. Black Lives Matter, you know, but how, how, how in the same time frame, if there is this unseen deity that is sovereign, how in the same time frame that Black Lives Matter, is there an uptick in white supremacy? Right. Or was there an uptick in white supremacy, and because of the assault against black people's lives... Somebody's waking up. Rohr says that is the awakening within humanity to say this needs to stop. So, I mean, then there's that. And so all of this thing goes, you know, and that's why I brought up Nazi Germany. And, I mean, again, I didn't pick my heritage. Right. I was born into the family I was born into. I was born into the body I was born into. But what I can do is I can acknowledge that other people are living lives differently than me. That's not making a difference. Let's try that. All right. Can you hear now? Yeah. All right. It was pulled and. Note to self clip at 5430. Yeah, so I, I mean, this get, I mean, and, and what I want to also establish is that we're, um, what we're trying to do is not talk about, like, these aren't just conspiracy theories. 
And that's the reason why when you talked about history, yeah, and there's a difference between actual history and conspiracy theories. Because this conspiracy theories usually have some thread of truth. And why do we enjoy conspiracy theories is because it has some sort of truth in it. Yeah. And we're like, ooh, that could possibly be this. It would explain this and this. And I mean, and then we take that and create almost this whole worldview around a conspiracy theory. And so what comes out of like the, um, you know, that started recently with the QAnon people. And this happened even a while back. I mean, there was the QAnon, you know, started conspiracy theories with a thing called Pizzagate, where they said there were these um, uh, politicians in D.C. who had a, a restaurant, a pizza joint, that they also used to traffic girls through, mm-hmm. you know, for the sake of their own benefit. And, I mean, I mean, like, some of these conspiracy theories get so crazy. Like... Democrats eat babies in order to stay alive. <laughs> the lizard people are all part of this conspiracy theory that gets like lopped in there. And then like, and the lizard people ultimately control our name. Like you see, these are the parts that are, that are not based in, in actual history. This is just where we like to create stories. Mm. So why do we embrace that? And, and what is that, that, that we want to embrace that instead of saying, well, let's dig into some like the, the skull and, and bones group. I mean, these are, these are actual groups. Why do we know that? Because they are people who have come out, even though they are secret societies, they've come out of it. And they said, I want to tell you at least a little bit about it. That's how we learn about some of the Masons and some of their, um, you know, the, the rituals and stuff like that. Why? Because somebody talked about it. Yeah. Now they were weren't supposed to. Right. It's secret. You know, they they did their best, I think, trying not to reveal people, but how much of yeah, and and, and that's and that's the blend, right? We're yeah. saying there's how do we know the fact? How do we know what's conspiracy? How do we know, you know, like all the blend of these things? And when you when you're listening like People like even the the conspiracy theories, like because it has that thread, it's easy for us to just jump into it and try to embrace it. And we're like, all right, how do we differentiate then? How do we how do we look at fact? How do we look at history, and and be able to pull them apart from like some of the like eating babies? Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think. The other thing, as you clarify, because that was really good, I think the other thing to be able to put out there to the listener is that we are using topics for a consistent thread. We are using topics, topics for a consistent thread to be able to show that you don't know what you don't know. Right. We to raise awareness. We're not asking for all of our listeners to agree with us on our individual points. Right. We're just saying that there is information that could be interesting to consider. And as we we point back, we we talked about you know 15 years ago, who in the world would have um, you know brought the rotary dial phone out and said, hey, government, we're just going to leave this off the hook. You go ahead and tap in, and you can listen to our, our family conversations. You know, and, and yet what we know is it's about big money. Mm-hmm. People are selling information. Right. And I, what cracks me up is I'll see on Facebook, on you know, some people are like, I can't believe this happened. We were just talking about this yesterday, and then all of a sudden it showed up on my phone in the ads. Well, why yeah, for players? the last seven years, easily. Right. I mean, you know, and you, I, and I would just say, and you, you bought Alexa. Your TV has Alexa. I mean, you know, like I just don't. You've been tr- using Google since its inception, right? <laughs> oh you my god! You don't think they started tracking you then, <laughs> right? So you just look at all this stuff and just know that. 
it's really not about the conspiracy. And that's where we're tying, you know, it's kind of like connect the dot coloring books. Mm-hmm. We're just we're just going to the next dot and we're saying, hey, would you consider this? And there's some real life stuff that really does matter. And so your involvement in it uh, to consider. Now, there could be people out there who would be like, you know, I mean, I Christians kind of make me tired, you know. Um, and, and, and so that's why we take the time to dissect, hey, even in our limited knowledge individually, you know, here, here's a broad brush swipe across. This is what it looks like. This is what it came from. But isn't it interesting that in these conspiracy areas then you can follow the thread of now here we are at the Knights Templar. I mean, there's no question about whether that existed or not. The real question is, is whether they know where the Ark of the Covenant is. Well, they're all dead. But that doesn't mean that another group of people who are a secret society weren't entrusted with the information and do I think that they're going to come up with the Ark of the Covenant? No, I don't. I think if they come up with the Ark of the Covenant, they're in a lot of trouble because of the what the Ark of the Covenant represents between God and his people and what the instruction was in regards to interacting with the, uh, the embodiment of the presence of God with the Ark. Mm-hmm. Which... Indiana Jones just tore the scab it. off, right? <laughs> right. Do you remember the first time you saw that movie? Yeah. What'd you think? I was. I mean, there there were some Indiana Jones like going back, like that just freaked me out. I mean, yeah, I was younger. Yeah. <laughs> but when the Nazis, you know, faces were melted off, like I mean, there right. was there was something to celebrate at least, right? The bad dudes were getting their faces melted off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But but it's images that stick with you, yeah. When you when you're looking at the pursuit of the um, the pursuit of the Ark of the Covenant, but you can look at any of these these artifacts. Um, you know, I, I was just looking at the list of decoded uh, episodes, and there's one on the Spear of Destiny, which you know is, I've never heard of. You've never heard of Spear of Destiny? No. Oh, because it's also in Constantine, which going back to Common Book and yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, but the the spear of destiny was saying it, it was the spear that pierced Jesus, right? That you know the Roman soldier that pierced Jesus in his in his heart or in his side, and yeah. Stuck it up there, blood and water came out. Yeah, that whole piece. They're saying that spear of destiny actually, um, con, you know, has contains power now um, because it touched you know the the heart of God yeah, or the lungs most likely, but right. uh, either way, but the, the spear of destiny, then they say there's been world leaders who have controlled this people like Napoleon, people like Adolf Hitler, huh. who have controlled the spear of destiny, which actually has given them the power. Like, and I'm like, yeah, I mean that, that may be, but, but it's those things. Like if you're, if you're searching for, this thing that's supposed to give you, I mean, and it, but, uh, but the Ark of the Covenant going back to the the Indiana Jones part. Do you really want to find this? <laughs> like, yeah. If you are searching for it and it does contain what you think it can, like, do you really want to find it? Because there's been stories of people being, you know, dropping dead. You know, and and that's Old Testament um, stuff where right. if it's not handled right, you're gonna die. Yeah. Like, do you want to find that? The Spear of Destiny. I don't. I mean, uh, the Constantine in the graphic novel of Constantine. So Constantine, for those of you out there, you can look it up. But he was a character um, that uh, uh, had had died, gone to hell. He he escaped hell. And now he's back here trying to make sure, like, so he's on earth trying to send the demons back to hell um, and and not himself. So he's trying to earn his way into good favor with God. Yeah. (laughs) And that's his way of doing it is sending the people to hell. So now when the spear of destiny hits the hands of people, it completely flips them. Like they just turn evil. Wow. Because of the power that it contains. And so thinking about that, 
do you really want that kind of power? I mean, I know some people are like, oh yeah, of course, but... And it seems contradictory right. that the spear that touched the heart of God... Would turn people evil. Yeah. Right. That's, but maybe maybe that is the, the point mm-hmm. in regards to um, what the true heart of humanity is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But see, Roar, Roar goes on this major teaching in regards to how much of... Christianity has been evolved from uh, Greek mythology and the idea of Thor or Zeus being up on a high pedestal, uh, lightning bolt and spear in hand, ready to strike down humanity, uh, where Roar's premise would be, hey, by the way, uh, since I was involved in your creation, I absolutely adore and love you. And so we worked out a way where as you are, I will be with you. And as you are not, you will be with me. I need to write that quote down. Mm. That was good. It was good. I liked it. Was that a Steve original? I haven't heard it anywhere. I haven't either. Yeah. You know, and so I think I think I could boil that down into a value of comfort, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, as we are, he's with us. And as we are not, we will be with him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's where, yeah, I mean, there, there's so much, uh, there's so many rabbit holes to go down with this. <laughs> um, but when you're looking at that, you know, maybe it's just that, uh, that same idea of absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. That is not a Phil. Uh, no, original. no. Right. <laughs> I've heard that before. Right. But yeah. that would be a statement that if you're actually trying to achieve absolute power, that it, you will be corrupted. And, and that's the, the switch in humanity, that if we're looking to just have people to control, to have power over another, then that's a power that's going to leave you like shattered. You're, you're going to be corrupted. Yeah. So, yeah. I just watched the episode of The Crown where uh, Prince Philip is going through midlife crisis, yeah. and his uh, his wife retires the old priest and hires a new guy. And uh, Philip asks her, he says, "Well, so how old is he? Oh, he's about your age. What's he going to do? Exactly what I've asked him to." And then this guy comes in and he makes the uh, appeal. He's like, hey, you've got this empty building and I'd like to have this retreat area for pastors who are going through difficulties or they find themselves where they need respite and, you know, and, and stuff. And so, mm-hmm. oh, Philip wouldn't, ha- I mean, he, he just is like an antagonist towards this priest. But in midlife, then the astronauts land on the moon and he pulls them in for a 15 minute conversation and the pedestal and i found this to be true Hmm. when i look at people from a distance and then i get close to them oftentimes i'm disappointed Hmm. and so um he gets to talk to the astronauts he's a pilot himself the idea of the accomplishment accomplishment of humanity landing on the moon and then he but he's in midlife and these astronauts are young whippersnappers they're strapping Mm -hmm. they're strong they're smart they carried out all this stuff and he's looking for this event to have been life-changing for them and it wasn't Mm -mm. And so he goes back and he apologizes to these men, probably 15 or 20 priests, because the smackdown that he laid on them of everything, and he asked for help. Mm -hmm. And then the end of the episode, it says that Prince Philip and this priest were friends for the next 50 years, and it was one of the best relationships that he had, and one of the most 
proud thing, uh, this retreat center at St. George Home or the St. George House. And it was religious and philosophy, you know, and stuff like that. But he came to the place to realize that everything he wanted to, Rara would say, he faced his own ego mm -hmm. and realized that whatever his ego wanted was not fulfilling or satisfying, which sent me to the Song of Solomon. Right. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity, you know, and um, and so I don't know. I, I just think it's super, super interesting that in this time that people have the opportunity to be students, students of life. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't have something that's putting a burr under your saddle, then I, I would just say push you into motion. Right. Start learning about stuff. You need to find it. Yeah. Just, I mean, just find some, find some stuff. Right, and it, and you, we bring up the things that are ultimately the stuff that we're, you know, yeah. that we've been talking about, or things that we have also been, the burr in the saddle, the you know, the pain in the ass, right? Is like you're like I'm struggling with these things, and what's the best way to to handle it? Yeah, learn about it, find out about it, discuss it, discuss it find out those avenue i mean and and how much more that you'll you'll find the things that challenge you the most are the things you're also the the most interested in yeah you're like okay like so this this is the reason why you know this is the reason why i mean so going back to you know conversations we've had with uh, black lives matter and um you know the the history and the things that have occurred is that like so you know, we, I think we talked about we were like a all lives matter people, right? We're like, yeah, we're kind of both at some point in our history. We're just like, no, everybody's life matters. So, and, and that and was stated in ignorance. And <laughs> we would come back to that we're, we both hold dear the sanctity of life. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and so now people who are, are right wing evangelicals are like, Hey, they're against abortion. And that's not what we mean. No. Yeah, and, this is an abortion talk. <laughs> right. And and then they're like, oh, you mean you're pro life. And I'm like, no, that's not what we mean. Right. We believe in the sanctity of life. Life as a whole. Right. From birth through living to death. And and that life is sacred. Mm -hmm. and, and and so but but again, it's it's like when people hear the terms and stuff like that, they put it in the file of what they think. Mm -hmm. And what we're actually doing is calling out a people who have ears to hear and say listen to the words that we're using and then from those words start to consider your box mm -hmm. of belief and what that is. Right. And so, yeah, I mean... Yeah, and so if without being challenged, we would have stayed where we were. Oh, yeah, I was totally an All Lives Matter guy. Right. I, like, I argued that probably for months. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I remember it, too, until, you know, and, and then it's like, but then you learn, like, I, I read more. I, I looked at, his, at some of the history that isn't always, um, you know, like, proclaimed it's not always the stuff that we bring out and right in our regular history books and so then when you're actually learning the history and and things like you know that that happens in that happened in every major city where you know like cities segregated people without even past segregation yeah where you get the blue line red line you know all redlining and all this other you know where you, where you're um, saying like you're allowed to own and you're not allowed to own right. based on the color of your skin. There's a movie all uh, out I think called Black Banker. Oh, I haven't yeah. watched it. Yeah, I watched it. Oh, have you? Mm -hmm. Again, if people are like, um, "Hey, I'd like to see a little bit about you know what this is about and mm -hmm. stuff like that," and, and there's other sides of this conversation that we haven't even touched on. Oh yeah. Um, but when my mom was in town. We hung out at the Earthen Warehouse studio, mm -hmm. and we were working a couple projects. I put in Ray, 
And uh, I like the music in Ray and stuff like that. But at one point, Quincy Jones says to Ray, he's like, yeah, I'm not going south. I'm not doing Jim Crow ever again. Mm. And so Ray gets down there and a, a black man says to him, Ray, you, you can make a difference right now. You can make a difference. Don't play the show. Do you realize they're charging the same money? for a black person to go to your concert as a white person, but only whites are allowed on the dance floor. Hmm. And we have to sit in the balcony. So, so the word is inequality. And, and with that, then the, the whole point was uh, history has shown that, that that happened. And, and do, are you a person who would say, that a black man or a black woman is only three quarters of a human. That I mean, a lot of people who would be saying all lives matter would say, I don't believe that a black person is really three quarters of a person. Well, that that's what people thought back in the day. I mean, that that is that that's a real mindset. Right. And, you know, and so so then what we are coming back to is we're saying, you know what? We've lived a life of privilege, and it, it's. I'll go back to I was born, you know, uh, born into a German family of a blue collar working dad, you know, and, and I, I didn't get to pick, and yet I've lived life, and now the work is awareness. Now, I won't stop with Black Lives Matter isn't the only point of awareness. No. But how come when it comes to inequality for the hungry, people can get on board? How come when it comes to inequality that people who don't have clothing can get on board? How come when it comes to inequality concerning clean water, people can get on board? But then how come when it comes to the conversation of people of color, everybody's like, oh, <laughs> breaks, everything, stop. I, I'm not willing to go. Well, why aren't you willing to go? How about the real question is, what are you willing to let loose of? Mm -hmm. And I think what you're going to find out is letting loose means that you're not in control. Can I talk about power and control? That's what I was about to get to. <laughs> Do it, man. But that's what I'm so what we find is that why is there privilege then? Because we've had the control, we've had the power. We, I mean, and, and I think they say, you know, to the, to the, um, to the victor goes the spoils, right? Mm -hmm. So ultimately then who the victor is, is going to write the story. We don't want to talk about a history where we have, um, enslaved people. We don't want to talk about the, the ways in which we have held people down and back. We want to talk about all the good stuff that we've done. You know, we, we don't want to talk about, you know, how columbus you know was a colonizer and he you know right came and brought all kinds of you know death and whatever we want to just say oh columbus discovered america and you know that was the parts of history right and pent uh pent mint what are the three ship pent uh, santa maria i don't know nina nina there's the other one um yeah so we want to talk about like all those good things they want to have the pictures where you know the 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 white colonizers are sitting down with the Indians at the table and everything's good and everybody's celebrating. And, but we don't want to talk about the, the things that were, so we get to write the history. Yeah. And that's what happened. And where power and control come in is like, even now down the history, when people say they use, um, the, like critical race theory, and they're saying, so critical race theory at its basic understanding minimum is saying we need to go back and, and learn some of the history of the things that were happening in, in our country. Now there's all kinds of people who, of course, use critical race theory and say it's Marxist or it's socialist or blah, blah, blah. But what is the basic understanding of is saying there are things in history we didn't learn that we need to go back and learn. And that's going to help us understand with the systems that we have in place right now where there is some missteps. There's things that have been put into place that we don't even understand why. And if you learn about the history, then you go back, oh, well, like that's why it's in place. I didn't realize that. And it was all based on, you know, like people, um, people of color 
and it was based on you know things that were happening with them because we wanted to keep them down and and so i go back to like egypt right Mm -hmm. and i go back to old testament since we've already brought in stuff about religion i mean this is what egypt was doing with israel with the people of god yeah right is they enslaved but they were growing well what can we do to hold them down well we're going to make sure that they don't have any more boys we're going to have this mass genocide to be able to keep them down yeah we don't want them to become too big because if they're too big that means they're too powerful yeah and that's what the powerful do they keep people subjected they yeah. keep them down because if they rise up that means bad for us yep out of control right yeah so that's my idea of power and control is we don't want to lose it because we like it right well and i i i think the first step towards recovery is admitting is to admit that you have the problem, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like, if you're like, "Well, I'm not a control freak," well, come on, All right? So, as you were talking, what came to my mind is the power of muscle memory. Mm. So, uh, and I, I, I'm thinking we'll prob- probably wind this up as we look at our timeline and and stuff like that. But when I was, uh, oh, back in 2001, 20 years ago or so, I had a gentleman who used to play on the Nike tour golf. Mm -hmm. And as he came into the church and was growing in faith, he told me he'd give me golf lessons. So I took him. And I learned a lot about golf. Mm -hmm. And eventually he got me, after a couple summers, he got me to a place. He's like, now you have your muscle memory. Well, before I left Urbandale and came out to Chicago, the guys put together a golf event, a golf outing, just, you know. So we're at this little little course uh, in Urbandale or near Johnston, and Um, by hole number three, and I hadn't golfed for three years, Mm -hmm. Micah stole my clubs. (laughs) Micah. Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, and, and so like, yeah, I, and it could have been longer because Pastor Joe had been there for almost five years. And, um, I think the last time I had golfed, it was with him and TK the first month he was there. Mm. And, uh, and so, anyway, we're, we're golfing. By hole three, I had figured out what was going on. By hole six, I was getting really cocky and started calling my shots. <laughs> by by hole eight, it was over a water feature, and I just said, "I'm really shooting for about 15 feet to the right of this because of the way that, the way the hill slopes." And I I I just nailed the shot. And Chris Thompson says to me, "He's like, you make me sick." I'm like, oh, dude, it's no big deal. All you have to do is just go into feel the muscle memory of the good shots that you've played in the past. And the other part is you have to have the mindset that if you screw up a shot, now it gets fun because your recovery shot is the creativity that you get to live through. Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes, and then you have to be mystical about it. Well, I bring that up because that's a good thing in my life that's muscle memory. The reality is I also have bad muscle memory. Mm. <laughs> right. That shape me. Uh-huh. And, you know, and I, we, we were talking the other day just about bad habits of COVID. Mm. The month of May is Mental Illness Awareness Month. I didn't realize that next year. 2022 we'll yeah. dedicate the whole month to mental health there we go um we learn as we go mm-hmm. um but muscle memory you know and uh i learned very quickly hard liquor is not my friend <laughs> right. because muscle memory of drinking beer is i like to drink volumes mm-hmm. you know and this goes down based on all all of chemical and in regards to that, 
And so like even with COVID, I had to be able to come to a place and say, hey, what's really going on here? And, and just ask the question. And the only way that I come back to this place of not being dependent is to relearn the new muscle memory. Mm. And what I would say to our listeners is, just remember, societally, we have things that we do in practice that are the muscle memory of culture. And there's things we need to go back and relearn. Mm. So don't think of muscle memory only as within your body. Think of muscle memory as in with your practice and your habits. Think of muscle memory as in with your attitudes. Think of muscle memory uh, in, in regards to opportunities. And as we are dying, we can still be growing. Mm. Or as we are living, we can continue to transcend Richard Rohr. Right. Not transcend Richard Rohr. Using his word, right. transcend, transcend right. you know, um, you know, to be able to be enlightened that in a dark area, mm-hmm. light can be shed. If you wonder what I believe about the light, go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter one, verses one through six. Mm-hmm. That's the light I speak of. If you if you wonder uh, ab- about that light even more, go to First John chapter one. Mm-hmm. There's a full description of the resurrected Christ. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, just put those things out there for you to consider. The reality is, I had a gentleman in uh, the second church I pastored who told me, he's like, you know what, Pastor Steve? He's like, you can be so heavenly minded, you're not any earthly good. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't catch on to that, except I really am wondering, hey, you know what? Is all this religion thing something to talk about to make us feel better about who we really are? Or can we move into motion and action to being better, becoming better? The evangelical word is transformation. Right. Transform. Sanctification. You're sanctified positionally, but then you're also working out your sanctification. Mm -hmm. And so with this, the preachers will stop preaching. Mm -hmm. Huh? Well, I was just thinking when I when you mentioned muscle memory and just real quick, I know we're going to wrap up. Oh but, yeah, yeah, no, we got time. But, but just that that understand. I mean, I I even um you know I've heard about muscle memory as far as like if you're working out. So if you're doing the same routine over and over yeah. again, it becomes less effective. Right. So thinking about that in terms of your life as well, if you're if you're just kind of stuck in that same thing. Like, of course, you're not going to grow. Right. You're not going to grow in your understanding of the world around you, of people that are different from you, things that are different from you. You're just going to kind of, you know, do the same thing and be the same person. Yeah. Like, what? But that's not going to do anything, you know, for you. I mean, like, right. you're going to just be, you know, in that in yeah. that same position. So. When you're looking at that, what's the opportunity that you have today to be able to say, you know what, I'd like to be challenged to grow. I'd like to find those opportunities that, you know, I, I can I can not just be stuck in the same routine. Where's the routine that is bringing us back to that muscle memory? <laughs> and how is it that we can start to shift and change, you know, like it and change happens by doing it once, but then. Yeah. You know, even creating a new routine. Yeah. A yep. new repetition. Yeah. New muscle memory. Yeah. So how are we going to do that other than challenging where we're currently at? Yeah. And I, I would really put out to the listener that if, you, if you're stumbling on it, there may be a support group that you'd uh, want to seek out and, and go to um, in regards to uh, a specific section or area of life. Um, you know, the, there's the, just the other part of get, get a pen and paper, you know, get your stylus and your iPad or whatever, mm-hmm. and take time to write down the observations, look at the observations and say, this is not working for me in my practice right now. 
But then also, what do you want to become? You know, write that down. This is what I want my life to look at. Um, you know, for actually, I'm going through a new uh, season change in my life because I'm finishing the construction part of Earthen Warehouse. And so the construction's done. Now I'm reframing. I've got the pencil out. I'm going down. I'm making my lists of the opportunities that I have. Right. And I'm taking time to listen. Okay, now what's in me that needs to come out? And then just beginning that whole part. I mean, I, so I'm super stoked. I'm mm -hmm. like, I, I'm, I'm excited because I get to be able to do that. But I mean, it, take a look at your season and maybe maybe where you're at is you're, you're at a time that you need to just be able to say, yeah, that was a bad one. Now I'm going to move on to a different one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you'll be able to understand what's been a bad season. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And it's like, so do you want it? Do you want that to be the season that you're in constantly now? Yeah. Or are you gonna? How am I gonna change a bad season? Well, I'm gonna look at what I've got. Who do I need to surround myself with? Who needs to be around me right now? Yeah. Yeah. And then let's move forward. Yeah. Let's learn. Let's grow. Let's discuss. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm hmm. Well, Phil, this has been a delight. It has. Yeah, I mean, like totally off, like, and it, it's been a while since you know. But I mean, to get to be church historians and <laughs> right. you know, tell All the kinds of stuff, tell the tell the stories, <laughs> sprinkled and dashed. We didn't want to get too much into, but Russell Brand has a new video out on UFOs and uh, some information in regards to is this something that's really real or is it a distraction based on mm. the current things that are going on in the world? Sure. We're going to get into UFOs for the Doctor Who. Uh, mm -hmm. fans that are out there. Right, and I, there are some. And I'm waiting for Chris's conversation. Doc Fordyce is going to be with us uh, next week for an interview. And I'm super, super stoked about finding out if I even want to start watching Doctor Who. Or I, I mean, who knows? Right. Who, it's always been who? encouraged for me too, and I just have never picked it up. Yeah, me either. So, so and then uh, he, he is uh, definitely um, a person who's... Yeah. So those are the things going. Right. Share. Cool. Number one, share, like, subscribe, subscribe. email, cutdaisiesandunicorns at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Continue to uh, make your comments on, on the YouTube um, as you're watching it. Uh, even on the premiere. Sometimes I'm able to jump on on the premiere and, yeah. and interact as Cut Daisies. Sometimes, you know, like so whatever like feel free continue to comment also yeah so. yeah and i think with all of that then uh we can just say and reinforce fringe episode two that's not really the episode number i think it's episode six of season two it will be. but fringe but it's, gonna be it's gonna be fringe the next iteration of the fringe the fringe and uh, I did have a listener out there, Matt Handley, uh, who told me that uh, he wears his earbud, like, sweatband. Yeah. And he's like, I'd like to say that I've listened to it all. He goes, but you guys, your voices are so soothing that I find that I fall asleep. <laughs> I'm like, wake up. <laughs> sexy and silky. <laughs> all right. Hey, thanks a lot, everyone. It's been a great, great episode. You take care, and we will... Thank you.